Hello, boys and girls. My name is LTC, and welcome back to another day in Minecraft. Today, we start off at sundown here, almost where we uh, left off in the last episode. And today, we will build the flying machine for harvesting our 2x2 two two trees from this universal tree farm. And the flying machine goes all the way back there where you see that torch over my head. Uh, at least it's the back end of the flying machine. So maybe it will not happen overnight, but um, I will be back with several progress reports until this is done. With the dawn of a new day, the first layer of the piston wall is done. And important whenever doing something with flying machines, put a stopper block uh, right in front of it so it does not go anywhere. Because uh, if you place the uh, observers in a inopportune order or they get updated uh, for some reason um, the whole thing can fly off and that's also why we have a whole pillar of obsidian blocks over there uh, this will be the turnaround point for the piston wall uh, the uh, wall will hit the pillars they will be blocked uh, in their forward momentum and then turn back around. Uh, I think uh, El Mango explains it quite nicely in his video, so um, I will link that one. And then back here, here in front, we have the uh, piston wall. And uh, the uh, important part here is the update order. Uh, because the uh, the outermost uh, segment here is cut off here, which means it has exactly um, uh, 12 blocks and can be pushed. But uh, even these two pistons are attached to this one, so this one cannot be pushed, but as... Uh, we are pushing this one first, these two pistons are moved out of the way, and then we have the same setup for this one over here. And then let's maybe uh, start here at the uh, back. Yeah, we can also do it from below. We have this one here, that's the flying machine. And we have a second one over there. And the flying machine will be started when this block here is pushed to this observer, which will start the flying machine moving forward and eventually pushing this uh, wall here. And this piston is uh, uh, triggered first. And through uh, quasi-connectivity, uh, this one will be powered, and then this one will update, and so uh, the update process will trigger to left. And that's how we can ensure that this is pushed first, then this, and then this, even though uh, basically everything happens in the, in the same game tick. And yeah, then uh, let's remove that obsidian block uh, on top there and see if this actually works. For testing purposes, we have a conveniently located button here, which will trigger uh, this redstone line. And the way this actually works is we have a redstone block on top there and basically that one powers this pistons but the piston does not know it about it so it is butt powered uh, which means uh, bo 
BUD means block update. Um, not sure what the D stands for, but essentially, um, as we're powering this block, uh, the piston gets retracted, which moves that block, which is the block update. Then this piston will extend, starting the whole thing, and uh, then the uh, signal is moved over to the uh, second one as well. So let's see how this goes Ooh, that worked nicely machine is going off nothing in the way by the looks of it hopefully it also stops right there in the front and comes back to us and if everything works as expected uh, then the flying machine should return and be in a state where it can be launched again. And here it comes. And this looks great. So I will add the additional layers on top to the top for the piston wall and then we can have one big wall moving forward. The piston wall is now complete and it is enormous. Uh, while building it up there were some issues with the thing not working. Mostly it was just blocks I uh, missed to place. Uh, but then the uh, um, bigger issue was the uh, scaffolding there on the side. Originally it was one block closer to the wall. And that caused issues because there on the side towards the top there are observers and when they moved past the scaffolding that of course triggered them which broke the machine. But now everything is working. However to properly show you I cannot do this uh, uh, while recording this video or this footage live because um, when you have that many blocks, you tend to get glitches, visual glitches where the block seems to stay behind uh, while the actual flying machine moves on. So let's have another time lapse of the machine flying. is done here at least for the piston wall I still need to get a roof in place so uh, that we can uh, prevent random uh, growing of the trees so we want to have absolute control over that and for that we uh, have to restrict light access from the top and then also figure out where the uh, items should go into our main storage system. So I guess somewhere down here on the ground. Um, yeah, let's finish that and then we can call it a day for this episode.
The collection system is quite easy. We have done it quite a few times. Everything is uh, put into this dispenser or dropper. I never know which one. But it gets sped out down there and then we have a water stream leading all the way over there to the main stream uh, collecting all the items for the storage system. The main part however is here on the top of the roof. And it's a roof with holes as you can see. And this has a purpose because these holes and under these blue wool blocks are more holes those are exactly over the daylight sensors there. So the holes here are over the controlling ones and the ones here are over the ones that will eventually be covered by leverage or trunk. And uh, we push this block over once we start the uh, flying machine, so that signal comes from over there, so that when all the leaves are broken, we place the saplings, it's still dark and no random tick can grow the tree. And then we have the second input uh, from here, from this uh, bubble elevator, uh, that will detect uh, when the uh, piston down there is moved uh, and that will get a second signal uh, pulling out the blocks again uh, allowing daylight to drop onto the, the daylight sensors and so they can actually detect when there is a difference between the signals. But that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, a bit shorter and uh, uh, more time lapse episode, but um, it needed to be done. And next time we will put in the final piece the uh, collection system or the harvesting system for the woods. So, see you then. Goodbye.